What's going on VFAM, your boy Juan Valdez here and today I wanted to make a quick video going over to three of the biggest mistakes I made on my first Shopify store that made it completely just fail, right? Honestly, after all the time and efforts that I put into that store, I literally felt ashamed because I thought I was doing everything that I was supposed to do right after testing it and realizing, thinking back now to the things that I actually did, it was a huge mistake. So I want to make this video to help some of you guys that are just getting started or maybe if you already have your store you know, running, help you guys avoid these silly mistakes that honestly made it so my store really didn't get any kind of results. For those of you guys that follow me, you guys know I like to be super transparent so I didn't give an update as far as so how I did last month, but I wanted to pull it up here. Last month, we did about 80 grand, and then if I'll refresh it for this month so far, so you can see this month, we're at about 20 grand. So honestly, pretty good month so far, I can't complain. You know, I'm working on doing, getting a lot better numbers, but again, a lot of the systems are in place, so now it's a lot more automated, and it's a lot better than when I first started my store. So now, to kind of get right into it, uh, I kind of broke down three of the biggest mistakes, again, that I made throughout my Shopify store that really caused it to fail. For those of you guys that don't know my story, when I first got started with e-commerce and drop shipping, my first store completely failed. It wasn't until my third store that I actually started seeing results it was a couple different reasons as to why so i'm gonna just jump right into it one of the first mistakes that i made with my first shopify store and it's a silly mistake is trying to sell things that i'm interested in right so some of you guys i've, I've already spoken about this before i wanted to really narrow down on this because this is an important topic it's something that i see people still do up to date right and so i figured when i make this video to kind of clarify for everyone you should not be trying to sell things that you're interested in right that's the first thing that i did and I, now I honestly, I learned from my mistakes. What I tried to do is, okay, a lot of you guys that follow me know, like I'm into fitness, right? I like to work out and just live a healthy lifestyle. So I decided to get into the fitness space, selling fitness related products. And I thought that was genius, right? Of course, if I'm into fitness, I'd probably buy this specific fitness product. That was literally my mindset. And that was a huge mistake. And I see that people are still doing that. So you wanna make sure you don't do that because when you do that, you're just making it a lot harder for yourself to actually see results and actually get any success because you're already down one. You should be doing research first to find things that have already been proven to sell and go after similar products, right? So that's the first one. You wanna make sure that you do that because the things that you're interested in, other people may not actually be interested in those products, right? So you wanna make sure that you're going after products that people are actually interested in. There's no need to create a need in today's world right there's already a ton of people that are shopping online or buying things and you can easily find the things that these people are buying and have similar products and market to them as well you know that's that was the first one for sure like hands down and i know some of you guys may be thinking like i may have made that mistake too or may have already heard about you making that mistake but i wanted to make sure i hit this home because when it comes to selling things online you want to make sure you're fulfilling a need right you're solving a problem you're not going after things that you just think are gonna sell well because you're not gonna do well if that's what you try to do. The next mistake that I did was well, that was a huge mistake is I tried to sell all my products really cheap and have all of them on sale. So my strategy was like, okay, I know that there's other people selling these products, some research, seeing like what I can mark my product up by and see what Amazon was selling and things like that. And so I figured, okay, cool. So why don't I just try to beat everybody else by having the best prices, right? And the cheapest product. And that was a huge mistake because when it comes down to, you know, buying things online, you never really want to be the cheapest, right? Because when you're the cheapest, there's a couple things that happen. And honestly, if you're being cheaper than Amazon, you're probably not making much profit, right? Amazon, they're willing to take that hit on a customer buying their products for way less than everybody else is selling it because they know they can get, they're going to get that customer to come back and buy again and again i rethink back to it like that was a huge mistake now another reason why that's a huge mistake and why selling really cheap products or trying to be the cheapest or and also having all your products on sale or both of those are huge mistakes when you sell really cheap products people start to know you as like this store or website that sells really cheap products right so a good example that i like to use is like thinking it back to walmart right nobody goes to walmart thinking about buying expensive products people go to walmart because they know that they sell inexpensive things so they know that they're going to go there to buy cheap products right once you kind of limit yourself start advertising yourself as like a store that sells really cheap products or the cheapest products and always has all their products on sale well now that's what you're known as right so whenever you try to sell you know more expensive products that doesn't work so that's exactly 
exactly what I tried to do. You know, whenever I tried to sell more expensive products, it didn't work, right? And the reason why is because people already knew that I was known with that store for having really cheap products, right? So obviously I tried testing really cheap products at first, then I tried to test more expensive products. But because my whole store was filled with just inexpensive products, then obviously that's why I didn't have any success thinking back to it. Obviously that was a huge mistake. So I see a lot of people doing that now. They set up their stores and then all their products are like on sale, right? And that's a huge mistake because what's gonna happen is when now people come to your store, they're gonna see you as a store that has things on sale all the time, right? So they're not gonna wanna buy things unless it's on sale because they know that you're always having everything on sale. So whenever you try to advertise like a regular retail product, if it's not on sale, they're not gonna be interested. And that is something you don't want. You want people to always be open to you buying free plus shipping offers if you have them available of free plus shipping products and also retail products if you have them available as well you want to be known for kind of having both right and this is the same thing i actually did with email marketing one of the biggest mistakes that i made is when i first started doing email marketing for my first shopify store all i was doing was sending out free plus shipping emails like back to back to back like my first email did super well the second one is super well third one but after like the fourth and fifth email my open rate my click-through rate in the sales that i was making with every single email started to go down and the reason why is because obviously not every single product qualified to be a free plus shipping product after i sent out those emails well i started to run out of products that i could actually market for free plus shipping offers and so i had to start selling retail or start promoting retail products right through these emails and instantly after i sent out a retail email that had only retail offers on it literally my sales didn't do anywhere near as high or as good as the sales that i generated from sending out free plus shipping emails and the reason why was because my customers or the, the people on my email list started to really categorize me as someone that sent out emails always with free plus shipping items so then once i had retail items they're like no i'm not going to get this because he may have it on a free plus shipping special and i can get it a lot cheaper and so that was a huge mistake so what i started to do after that and this is something that for those of you guys getting started like you want to make sure you don't do that because your email list is like one of your biggest assets literally any asset if you go to any single business one of their biggest assets is always your email list and it's the same for you guys right so when you're first getting started you want to make sure that or even if you're doing email marketing right now make sure that you guys are not only sending out free plus shipping emails you're mixing it up right we do a majority of our email marketing for our shopify store majority is all retail emails right all retail offers and then we have like once or twice a month we'll send out an email that's like free plus shipping and what that does is it builds it builds a lot more urgency and scarcity when it comes to your free plus shipping emails because they know that you're only gonna send those twice we're only gonna send these emails out twice a month so they know that if they don't if they don't take advantage when we send out these free plus shipping emails then they're, again they're gonna have to get these products at the retail price and so now because we do that and we have like our email list uh, established and they know that again we're gonna have times where we, where we will have free plus shipping sales and offers available but mainly it's retail product well now we get sales from both our retail emails that we send out retail offer emails and also our free plus shipping emails that we send out we do still generate a little bit more on our free plus shipping emails at times but we still get also sales from our retail emails which is great because we're sending a lot more of those out so they kind of balance out if I didn't get into the habit of emailing retail offers early enough i could have probably you know completely brought down the numbers in my on my email list right my open rates my click-through rates and my sales and obviously i didn't want to do that because i had you know at that point in time our list was growing like crazy just like how it is now but that's when we were just getting started right so we were just like starting to pick up some traction and so that's obviously a huge mistake when it comes to email marketing now i wasn't emailing out these emails with like my first store this was like i failed completely my first store because i didn't even do email marketing to begin with but it was a mistake that i wanted to include in this video that i see a lot of people making right when it comes to email marketing first off not a lot of people do email marketing which is a huge mistake but second of all when i see people doing it they're emailing like free plus shipping offers all the time which is a huge mistake now the third and last mistake that i made was thinking that i'll i could just have a decent shopify store and that would be enough to make sales right so my thought process was how fast can i get this store done or in my opinion done and up and running and start getting customers to come and buy things right that was my thought process i was thinking like how fast can i get this set up how i should have been thinking about it is how can i perfect this store and optimize it so that people, when people come on my store 
they're actually incentivized to buy right because i have all the right things in place and that's not the mindset that i had at all so my mindset was like again how can i get my store set up the fastest so i rushed my store so i can try to start making sales and that was a huge mistake you want to make sure you guys don't do that i didn't optimize for conversions for those of you guys that don't know about optimizing and what optimizing your store for conversions is is simply when you have all the right things in place for example like the, the cognitive biases in your store and which are the things that basically help people make decisions which is like scarcity urgency social proof all these different things having your store optimized is something that's super important that's something that i didn't do right my thought process is how can i set this store up the fastest that way i can start trying to generate sales Sales. and so that was a huge mistake and also I didn't think about the buying process that I was having my customers go through from all the way from the pre-purchase to the post-purchase again because I tried to rush my store I didn't think about you know what my customers were potentially thinking when they were coming to my store so one of the most important things is like when it comes to you having your store optimized and congruent you want to make sure that from the time that a customer sees your ad all the way until the time that they check out everything in your store like makes sense right and it's, and it's congruent what i mean by that is if you're gonna have a nice looking ad make sure your store looks good right uh, make sure you also have a back-end system i didn't have any of that in place none of that so that's super important because the buying process is important as well so what's the customer going to see when they first land on the home page which again when i first did my first store it was like it was terrible it was like i wish i still had it around so i can show you guys or at least screenshots of it how much of a joke it actually was make sure you guys don't make any of these silly mistakes because they can cost you time and effort and money of course um, obviously my goal is to help you guys pretty much know everything that you need to know to take a store from not only a store but your e-commerce business from from a to z and really have success with it because when it comes to e-commerce it's a lot more than just having like a high converted shopify store right obviously you need to have you know good products good ads things like that but for this video i wanted to mainly focus on the three biggest mistakes that i made with my first stores uh, if you guys want to see more videos about other mistakes that i'm making with either my shopify store or just in general with an e-commerce comment biggest mistakes down below i'm testing non-stop so obviously sometimes i do things that work and sometimes i do things that don't so uh, that's that and of course if you guys picked up a thing or two from this video make sure you drop a like and if you haven't already make sure you join the v fam smash that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next video peace